We're going to switch gears now to U.S.-China tensions. They really remain a missing piece in the global puzzle to recovery. We have Zoom halting product sales in China today. And, of course, Microsoft racing to buy TikTok from Chinese tech giant ByteDance. Todd, we're going to go back over to you. How do you see China tensions impacting the markets and specifically ETFs in the near term? So we hear from many investors that they want to be careful how much exposure they have to China within their portfolio without fully being aware that roughly 40 percent of emerging market ETFs have exposure to China. So these are leading ETFs like iShares, IEMG and EEM and Vanguard's VWO. So you are heavily weighted towards China directly, whether you want to be or not, or you have to make a conscious decision to choose ETFs. Like there's a freedom weighted ETF, FRDM, that's offered by Alpha Architect that happens to exclude China because of the freedom exposure uh, or, or how the China stands from a freedom weighting. So uh, it is a heavyweight. That said, China is actually performing quite well. So the, ET, the leading ETF or one of them, MCHI from iShares, uh, was up 12 percent year to date through the end of July, it was up 8 uh, percent in just July alone. It actually is leading the broader emerging markets. So it's been good to the portfolio, whether people want to have it or not. So emerging markets are definitely something a lot of ETF investors are looking at. Jay, your thoughts? Any way that Global X is kind of getting around all this U.S.-China tension where investors can find ETFs that mitigate the potential downside? Well, at Global X, we probably have one of the biggest China suites there. We have 11 different China sector funds, each targeting one of the major uh, sectors in, in China. And we think it's it's not a question of do you want China or do you not want China. It's a question of what part of China do you want. Do you want the old economy that includes energy and financials and industrials, where it was really about industrializing China very quickly? Or do you want the new economy that was really led by technology firms and communications firms? Because we see a massive shift from an export-led economy to a consumption-led economy. But I think, you know, taking a step back, there's a misconception here that U.S.-China trade relations is something drummed up by Donald Trump and, and President Xi Jinping. This is a structural change. This is something that's going to happen well beyond Donald Trump's presidency. Um, as we as we look, you know, a decade ahead, we're just going to continue to see uh, two economic powers uh, competing in a world that has only so much growth around it. And so these technology names, I think, are going to be butting up, uh, butting heads just more and more going forward. So with so much uncertainty about U.S.-China tensions, would now be the time to invest more in the U.S. or more into those emerging markets? Well, we see a lot of opportunity in the emerging markets and the United States. Yeah, frankly, what we're seeing is a bifurcation of the entire technological world, where you're going to have you know Western technology and 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 you know Eastern technology with China and Southeast Asia quickly rising. So we think investors need a foot in both sides of that equation. I mean, so, some Chinese technology names are some of the fastest growing companies out there, and are you know creating very disruptive platforms very quickly. And I think it would be uh, it would be a mistake for investors to not be playing both sides of that trade. Todd, any other quick thoughts? I just, investors need to stay diversified. So the U.S. has been uh, a, a safe haven uh, for investors. That's where the focus has been. But emerging markets, and specifically China, has outperformed. Oh, at least China has outperformed the U.S. equity markets this year. So you want to make sure you're broadly diversified across the globe, not just targeting one area or one sector of the market.